In the console, you can see what happens when you start Tomcat. So the APR base, APH Tomcat, blah, blah, blah. I'm listening to port 8080. Coyote. Coyote is one of the components of Tomcat. Catalina. Catalina is uh, where the uh, project will be. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's running. It said start it. First JSP. All right. So if I double click on the server, look at this. It shows me the configuration of that server, which is pretty cool. Once in a while, you might need to do that. If you want to change the port, you can change the port that it listens to. But the reason why I want to take a look at the server is because now look at this, it tells what, what modules have been deployed, if they're enabled or not. This is very similar to what when you download Tomcat and you start Tomcat on its own without Eclipse, without a Java project, without anything. When you start on its own, there's like a admin page that tells you what web apps have been deployed. This is similar. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to take a look at this is because you're going to wonder, where is this Tomcat server at localhost? It's not the same one that is in C column backslash Apache Tomcat 635. Notice that I don't have a first JSP deployed here. By the way, web apps is the equivalent to HT docs in Apache or or what did we call it? The deployment folder. Notice that there's no first JSP. So where is this thing getting deployed? Well, what Eclipse does is, okay, I know what Tomcat looks like and where it's installed, but I'm going to create my own deployment little server in Tomcat under servers. And it's going to be called Tomcat 6.0 Server Localhost Config. And then it's going to put all the configuration of this server here. The advantage of doing that is that you can actually have several Tomcat servers with different configurations each so that you can de you deploy your stuff which is pretty cool. And you can have them listening through different port numbers. So you can have one listening through port 8088, and then one 8080, another one 8082, or whatever. Okay? And you can deploy several projects into the different Tomcat servers and run them together. And they can communicate with each other, too. That's going to come up really important later on, because remember, we're learning how to build distributed systems. Distributed systems means you're going to have a whole bunch of servers, and you have to orchestrate them, make them work for you, for your app. But exactly where is the server path? Where is it really the server path or the catal what it's called the Catalina base in 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 Tomcat lingo the Catalina base or deploy path here it is this is it it's the dot metadata dot plugins or eclipse blah 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 this stuff so if you go into your rapid java or whatever workspace you have rapid java Every workspace in Eclipse gets this metadata folder created. It's dot metadata. That tells Eclipse what kind of projects are in this workspace, what kind of context. So if you go in there and you go into the pl dot plugins, and then you go into or Eclipse WST server, or Eclipse WST server. Man, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? 
server core server core you will find a temp one I guess temp zero was the other one the other tomcat temp one you go into temp one and what do you find hey I have seen this structure before where have I conf temp web apps work the same structure that is in my C column backslash Apache Tomcat 6.0 installation see that and if I go into web apps oops I don't see first JSP why because it's maybe under work local host there it is first JSP so if you go into first JSP Apache JSP you will see wait a minute index underscore JSP that Java what is that let's take a look I thought it was called index.jsp, right? Or oh, in fact, the one that we're working on is called index2.jsp, which is the one that shows the employee. So what is this index2 underscore jsp.java? If you guys go and look at it, this is what you get. It's actually a Java class that extends from another class. In fact, it's a, an Apache Tomcat class. Okay? But that's not what it's important. What's important is actually that it implements what it's called an underscore JSP service, which has the HTTP request and the HTTP response. Every request to a web server will trade will trade that it will trade the request and the response and it's always back and forth back and forth the request and the response because that's all you know web applications are they're stateless requests and you get a response and notice that our entire JSP has been written in Java code. So now we have something called a page context get out. And we're using the write uh, function of that out, which is, you know, an object. And what are we doing? We're telling it, hey, write a new line, a new line, then this doc type, and then this HTML tag, and then this header tag, all that stuff. All the way up to up to the background color of employee type. So let's go back to our index two. So all the way up to employee type over here it has created Java code without that right. I mean literally took that and put it out right. And then in here, which is our HTML tag that indicates here comes Java script, not script, Java scriptlet. There's a difference between JavaScript and Java and I hope you already understand that. Here comes Java and then Java just becomes the regular code of this class. Exactly as it's been typed. It's declaring a string called driver with this stuff and it's declaring a connection initialized to null. It's trying this stuff. All the way up to the if statement. Indeed, that's where the scripting ends. And then here comes the 
table rows and the table data. Again, outright. But wait a minute, when we use a variable, it's an out print. See that? So here it does an out write up to here, and then when we find this scripting tag, it does an out print. So that equal sign gets translated into out print, not into an out write. The else. So what I'm trying to say is every Java server page, which is what? It's a bunch of HTML with scriptlets. Java scriptlets. Right? Gets translated into servlets, no matter what. So we're going to have to learn what a servlet is. Because that's the key structure of the Java technology, the Java web technology. Servlets. Yes, Ivan. Question. Tomcat did that. Tomcat. Remember, where did we find this index two underscore JSP Java? Under the work directory of our server. Now, we could have done the same thing. If we stop this server, we could have done the same thing on our regular <coughs> Tomcat server. How? Instead of right clicking on the first JSP and saying, okay, I want to run it on the server and then tell it, yeah, whatever, and then tell it, you know, use the local host. Tomcat 6.0, what we can do actually is we can say, hey, I want to export this project. And I want to export it into a web WAR file. A WAR file is a web archive. It's nothing else than a zip of all the project stuff. Okay? same structure, web content, web inf, XML, it's all this stuff inside a zip. But instead of calling it dot .zip, we call it dot .war. And then where do you want it to? I want it to destination, and then you tell it, c colon backslash Apache Tomcat 6.0 web apps. That's where I want it to go. But sorry. File name is first JSP. Did I spell that? Yeah, first JSP. Save. So it's going to export my entire first JSP web project into our first JSP.war inside the web apps of Apache Tomcat. And I'm gonna optimize it for a specific server runtime. Yeah, that's fine. Can do that. I can even export the source files if I wanted to. Typically, you don't. Typically, you do not export the source. And then, if there's any file in there, you will overwrite it. Finish. So now, if we go into our, where is it? Apache Tomcat web apps. You're going to see a first JSP that war. Okay? And now I have nothing to do with Eclipse. Nothing. Might as well not use Eclipse at all. Because now I can go into the in folder of my Apache and start it up. And the same stuff that you found on the console of Eclipse is what you're going to see in here. Okay, these are all the different projects in the web apps folder of Tomcat getting deployed. And now you go back to your browser and hit it localhost 8080. This is what I was talking about. 
stuff that you get automatically as part of Tomcat, which you don't get if you run it from within Eclipse. Because remember, within Eclipse, it creates its own little folder under the metadata. What else? Slash first first JSP, I think that's what the name of the project is, right? Here it is. It defaults to index.jsp. This is the departments table. But I don't want the default. I want the index to the JSP. Here it is. <laughs> I think I messed up the colors. Um, but that's irrelevant. Um, so now, if I go into my Apache Tomcat web apps, I'm sorry, not web apps, work, Catalina, localhost, I will see a first JSP folder, and I'll have to go through the package path. If you guys remember, the package path is... Where is the package? It's org org apache jsp by default here it is they were recently created see that this is our servlet in fact it should be should be the same servlet. Look at that. Beach. What I suggest, <coughs> and this is the rule of thumb, when there is a lot of static content, and I'm talking about more than 50% of the content in the page is static, do it as a JSP. It's more, much more straightforward. You can start from an HTML mockup, you know? Because once you have the mockup of your home page, you can rename it .jsp, just like you did with back in PHP, when you had your HTML and you rename it PHP, and <laughs> it will still render it the same. Same exact thing with J with um, with JSPs. You can rename your mockup of your homepage, your HTML, as JSP. <coughs> and if less than 50% of the content is dynamic, in other words, more than 50% is static, leave it as a JSP. Now we're gonna get to see later on when we start building a lot more content in your web app that there are going to be some pages, web pages, that will get their content mostly from the database. So there's going to be very little static content. And if 50 or more percent of the content of the web page is dynamic, comes from the database, it's better to implement it in a servlet. Got it? <coughs> so, off your home page. To do that, you have to have already in your wiki a mock-up of your home page. You have to have a full understanding of what is it that you are going to build. You know, who are your main entities? What what are your what are the main what are the main guys involved in your web app? Okay? Which brings me to the second part of the homework for next week. Which is, for tonight, you guys were supposed to highlight the nouns of... Highlight the nouns of your problem statement. Create a list from those nouns. Now, I want you to reduce it to the least common amount of nouns 
you know, the guys that are going to really be involved in your project. The rest could be, I don't know, attributes of themselves or whatever. You know, for instance, just to give you an idea, Timex. Timex, um, and I'm not sure if I updated my my wiki. They actually become attributes of the most important ones. So, if you read my problem statement, you know, it's a, we will build an online timing system. Our employees currently. Will, what I did is I highlighted the nouns, right? Put them in bold. Don't repeat them. I mean, if employees come up more than once, just highlight one. And then you create a list: timesheet, employee, department, status, time. Look at all the stuff that I came up with. Yeah, I want you to list them. Even if you don't use them. And then later on, what you're going to realize is, yeah, timesheet is, is the most important one, obviously. Employee. But, but for instance, time or hours, or whatever you want to call it, because I had time in the problem statement and I had hours. And I realized, you know what, it's the same thing. Time and hours are the same thing. So I just put them together. But time or hours, or whatever you want to call it, is an attribute of the timesheet. So eventually what you're going to see is you're going to come up with just the very basic important and the other ones are just attributes of them. You know, and this is how it's going to evolve. In in fact, Timex evolved this way. Later on it's going to be employee, timesheet, payment and department. And for instance, uh time is going to be part of hours or time is going to be part of timesheet. Status is going to be time timesheet, so it's status is, and time becomes part of timesheet. So it gets it gets reduced. And you're going to start seeing the relationship between these. So, for instance, you know, one employee works for one department. I mean, one or more employees work for one department. And one department is charged by one or more timesheets. And one employee manages one or more timesheets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So, so the next thing that I want you to work on for next week is actually this. Work on this. Create a model. And finally, when you have the final version of that model, like this, timesheet, employee, payment, department with all the attributes, create the database. To create this image, I use a uh, workbench. Is it workbench or? Yeah, I think it's called workbench. Yeah. So w what I did to create the database is actually the query browser. Because I manually went and said, you know what, I'm going to create a new schema. I'm going to call it whatever, you know. And then after you create that schema, hello, where's my schema? Here it is. Then you create a new table and you call it, you know, whatever you want. And then you start adding all the different columns, right? And you should know pretty much, you know, if, if it's going to be your, your key, if it should be an integer, you know, if it's going to be a name, should be a var chart, blah, 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 all that stuff. You start adding them. And that's, that's after you have a clear picture of your model. You cannot build a database unless, first of all, you know exactly what you're going to be building. Maybe you will you you might be off by a few attributes nouns that you have missed. Okay? No big deal. We can add them later. But definitely you need to know who are your main entities and how they relate to each other before you actually build a database. So for next week, you're going to build your home page either as a JSP or a servlet first thing. Second thing, 
you're going to build your list. Well, that was due tonight, but I'm not going to grade it. You're going to build your list, nouns, build the model, the relationship, and the database. That's it. Starting next week, this is going to be really cool. Starting next week, we're going to start using our first Java framework. That framework is called Hibernate. It's gonna, it's really pretty cool because it's gonna allow us that once you have the database created, that framework is gonna look at the database and say, "Oh no, I know exactly what you need to be able to create the cruds, the create, the reads, the updates, and the deletes of every single one of them, and it will create the code for you." Sort of what Bake did for Cake PHP back then. I don't know if you guys remember, but Cake was this console utility written in PHP that you tell it, hey, go and look at that database. And it will go and look at the database, the, the structure of all the different tables and the relationships through keys and foreign keys. And it will build an entire website where you can actually do creates, reads, updates, and deletes of all these different entities. That's what sort of, it's not going to be a web app, but that's what sort of what Hibernate is going to do for you. Is the home page going to be the login page? Some, depends, I guess depends on your web app. Some people have their home page somewhere in some corner, a place where you can actually go and log in. Other people have a whole bunch of content in the home page and just a link or a menu link that will take you to the login. It's up to you. Right? But this is my revised version. Notice that my revised version uses some kind of cascading style sheet that will have the same look and feel all across the pages. It has menus. It has a logo, it has a left-hand side content, it has a, pr a primary content, which is the sign-in. Oh, okay. The, um, well, the question is, do you want just the model or do you want the entire model with entities and attributes. Yes, I need the entire model with entities and attributes. Why? Because you're going to be creating the database out of it. So, and don't worry if you miss an attribute right now, because missing an attribute we can add it later on. It's just make sure that you have a clear picture of who your main entities are. Because those are the tables in your database. The main entities are going to be the main t uh, the tables in your database. Oh, that's a good point. Um, don't build any foreign keys relationships. Just make sure that every table has its key, right? ID. Typically, it's called the ID. Um, make sure it's integer. Um, you know, consecutive. What is it called? Auto increment or whatever. And if you have a foreign key in a table, just name it like for instance in the case of let's go back to Timex. Timex, the timesheet table, right, has an employee ID. An employee ID is a foreign key to the employee key, right? If you take a look at the timesheet table, there are no foreign keys defined. Don't define them, OK? Just make sure that you define the primary key, and that's it. I know that employee ID is going to be a foreign key to the employee ID primary key, right? But don't define it. Why? Because we're going to tell Hibernate to look at those things, to look at those relationships. 
and Hibernate will create the configuration for us. And we can actually manipulate the configuration. We, if, we, if we don't want to call it employee ID, we want to call it, I don't know, um, employee social secure number or whatever. You know, we can do that from the Hibernate side. Building. And hear me this out. Very clear. We're not going to be building Java server pages like we did with PHP. What did we do with, G with PHP? You guys remember? We just took the HTML mockups, right? Rename it as a PHP extension file. And then started putting scriptlets just like we just did with JSP. And we know that that's not the best way to create a web application. Why? Because you're putting business logic inside the view. When you want to separate the business logic from the view, it's going to be a mess. So we're going to create it right from the beginning. We're going to create it like we're going to jump from the mockups or the static HTMLs to cake PHP. And I'm, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys remember the, the cake PHP version or the Ruby on Rails, if you took Ruby on Rails. But it was with the idea that you already had a database established, well nor normal form, in well normal form, that you can leverage from it and create objects easily. Right? And then all you had to do was, through controllers, send the right views. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're not going to implement our project using JSPs. No way. So if that's the case, then no. I don't want you to be writing code like this. Now, I did it like this because I need you to understand what Java server page is. This is a Java server page. 